So what a story. So you, you were homeless for a couple of years. I mean, talk to me a bit about your life and how you ended up uh, being homeless and, and how you sort of met your business partner to set up your pub and, and, and become a quiz master extraordinaire. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that we don't really talk about, mental health and things along those lines. And I just found myself in a situation where I, I didn't trust anyone. I My whole mental health had just gone. There was nothing left of me. And I found myself living on the streets of London for, for two years and just, you know, day to day, just kept going. And, you know, there were some very dark times where, where you know, the dark thoughts that you have, but you don't really feel like you have anyone to turn to because you're on your own. And I was very fortunate that a homeless charity picked, picked me up where I was sleeping on the embankment in London. And we went through the process and they managed to get me resettled and they rebuilt me from a shell of a man and, and turn me into, you know, onto the road of the, you know, actually having a personality again, because if you don't talk to anyone for two years, you, mm. you don't have anything. So, um, and then sort of fast forward, I moved, uh, met my partner who lives in Darwin, who I'm now married to. We've been married uh, five years uh, on the 2nd of July. We've got a four year old and, you know, through a few uh, sort of different jobs, I ended up running a pub in Darwin uh, with my business partner and it was brilliant but the best night of the week was Thursday nights it was quiz night we we had such a good a good laugh we had some great teams and some great team names and when we handed the keys back about a couple of weeks before because it wasn't financially viable we handed the keys back just a couple of weeks before the pandemic but I wanted to continue doing the quiz for for the teams that I'd, I'd been hosting for the last uh, 11 months so I just set up an event on Facebook and just said, who fancies doing a quiz now that we can't do anything else? Feel free to share it with your friends. And we had half a million people interested in the first quiz. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, the pandemic, people have become so... Um, what's that word where you just become adaptable and creating lots of different things and just... I mean, this is a, a wonderful concept, but I'm, I'm so sort of interested in, in your journey whilst you were in, uh, homeless for two years. Um, what, what was that like? Because I know people watching may not have any concept of it, but if you were to talk about it, what, what, what was it actually like? What was the experience like? It, it's you, you go through every single possible emotion that you can possibly think of and then more. Uh, for me, I, I didn't sit on a street corner and beg. I didn't do anything illegal, so I wasn't running into shops and stealing things or stuff like that. I just I just learned to adapt and survive. And you you have some interesting days where you wandered. I mean, I, I could sometimes in London, I could walk 18 hours a day and I was relying on people having dropped loose change. And in that adapting to life, I realized that, you know, sort of late 2000s, I could buy a packet of custard creams for 20 pence from a supermarket, which became that became my staple mm. diet for, yeah. for many years. And sometimes if, you, if I found a little bit more loose change, I'd treat myself to, to a bag of chips or something like that. And but it was for me, I, I was trying to keep myself going. So I had little walks that I would do in London from waking up in the morning and mm. if I say for example walked from where I was on the embankment uh, right by Bankman tube station and I could walk all the way out to Heathrow airport the outskirts are there uh, if I could do that in say five hours one day I'd go right I want to do this in four four and a half hours today or you know so I'd set little challenges to try and keep the brain going but then you'd have really bad days where you know you could spend 18 hours a day walking you don't find anything you've not eaten for for a couple of days and you just then sit and think, why Why am I still doing this? Why am I putting myself through this? And, you know, there were a couple of times where I did contemplate taking myself out of the equation and thinking, well, no one's missed me for six months, a year, 18 months, whatever a point it would have been. And no one would have would have been any wiser. But the, the thing that always brought me back from that was people that I know and people who knew me wouldn't miss me, but there would have been emergency workers who would have had to find me and put themselves through that. And I thought, I, I don't want to do that. So there was that little shred of me that still had a bit of decency about me to, to pull myself from the brink and, and just keep going. That's all it was. It was always survival. How did you get out of it then? 
Uh, so that was um, a homeless charity called The Connection at St. Martin's, who I would scream about them all the time because they are the most incredible bunch of people. And they just happened to find me sleeping where I was on my bench, which I used to call number three, Riverside View, uh, Victoria Embankment. But they even admitted themselves that they didn't think anyone would be stupid enough to make that their, their sleeping point because you're right by the river open you know through all seasons and you know traffic passing and it's it's unsafe most people will try and find a doorway or an alleyway or somewhere to hide whereas i was probably in one of the most visible places you could be and they just left some details and said come and talk to us we might be able to help and it, it took me probably three days after they left that card to actually go through their famous red door uh, at trafalgar square because that was the point where i was admitting that I needed help. Uh, all of a sudden, it was there could be some help. Never knew it was possible, and now they could actually potentially get me off of the situation and maybe reintegrate me into society. And it was it was quite a scary thought. Thought having gone through you know two years on my own with barely any conversation other than you know lost mm. tourists. Mm. I mean, and thankfully, you got out of that. They helped you, and you ended up running or being part of a, a pub. And uh, talk to me about the quizzing then. How did, how did that start? And how did you sort of end up in there? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, always, loved, I've always loved a good pub quiz. I play with a great team um, before we took on the pub. So every, every Thursday night, it was our one night of the week. You know, the group of friends that I had, we weren't ones for falling out of nightclubs at three o'clock in the morning and, you know, not knowing where we are. We always just enjoyed a nice sort of civil drink and, and a quiz. And when we took over the pub, it was the first thing I did was reintroduce that to a Thursday night. I had a great bunch of regulars who would come in and, you know, we'd, we'd put eight free beers on the table for the winning team, but they could all pay a pound each and we'd do, we'd play deal or no deal at the end and they could gamble those eight pints to win prizes, you know, win, you know, actual cash. And it was, it was just a fun atmosphere and it was great to see people enjoying themselves and having a good laugh. And like I say, when we handed the keys back for the pub and I got to play with my team for a couple of weeks and then, you know, we were told that's it, everything's closing down. And I sat there and went, well, what do I do on Thursday? Thursday's my one night that I really enjoy. And I thought, well, maybe I could do something online. I've got a bit half a brain cell. Maybe I could just do, you know, a Facebook Live or something along those lines and just ask a few questions, you know, a bit of pen and paper fun like I did in the pub before and just do that and see what happens. So like I said, I just created the event on Facebook for my friends, didn't realize that it was set to, to a public event and my friends shared it and they shared it. And then on the Monday night, it, because this was on the Saturday, the Monday night we, was, we were told that's it, everything's now locked down. And it just snowballed on from there. And we, we think we had in that first one about 200,000 people watching live. Oh, wow. And I said, look, if you want this to carry on, if you want me to do this every every Thursday night, I'm more than happy to. It's not like I've got anything else to do right now. Uh, if you want me to do that, then we'll we'll carry on and I'll do it every Thursday. And we had uh, overnight, we had a hundred and I think it was one hundred and eighty thousand people joined our Facebook page and about hundred about the same on YouTube. And I've done it every night since that first one on twenty sixth of March. I've not missed a single Thursday night since that night. My God, there's a lot, lot of work in it, but uh, fabulous stuff. And you've raised <laughs> £500,000 approximately. Um, is that for one specific charity or lots of different charities? Oh, and it, yeah, we've just crossed over a million pounds. It's, so it's oh a million God. that we've raised. So we, we started with um, NHS Charities Together. Uh, we've raised money for Alzheimer's Research UK, um, the Diana Award Anti-Bullying uh, Ambassadors. We raised money there, um, all the way down to things like Royal Lifeboats Association. And then through a separate side of the quiz that we've got, which we call Patreon Membership Scheme, we've raised money and donated money to, to smaller independent charities around the country as well. So I think in total, there's about 60 to maybe 70 charities that have benefited from from the quizzes over from every Thursday and Saturday night. 